Call to order of the Town of Corte Madera Climate Action Committee for Wednesday, February 15th. Um, Phoebe, you want to help us with the roll call? Yes. All right, Committee Member Wall. Here. Do you yeah, press here? Wait, push. Uh oh. Okay. Here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, committee member Simon is not present yet. Uh, committee member Foster is not able to make it this evening. Committee member Alden. Here. Thank you. Vice Chair Ruiz. Here. Thank you. And Chair Johnson. Here. Great. That's everyone. Uh, should we salute the flag? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. on his way. Oh, cool. uh, um, why don't we uh, go back and recognize that Phil has joined us? Thank you. Record, show. Record shows that Phil joined us. Good to see you, buddy. Um, we'll go into um, open time. Is there any uh, Anyone wishing to speak on non-agenda items will be recognized this time. Is there anybody online that wants to speak? We do not have anyone online. Close that. We'll move on to approval of meeting minutes for the January 18th meeting. They are attached uh, to our packet. Um, any comment in, on any items? No. Um, do you have a motion for approval? I so move. Second. I second. Um, any, um, I'll take a vote. Uh, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Uh, meeting minutes are approved. Um, general business update on timeline and process for evaluating a reach code for remodels, additions, and discussion of committee role. Adam Mark, is that you? I'll start it off. Um, so, this item is just to give you an, an update on what the plan is for considering the second part of the county's model code that council did not adopt in, in last year. And council has asked for that code for remodels and additions to come back to them by this summer. So the goal is to have um, at least an initial conversation with them by July of this year. And the, the timeline for getting there is right now we're in February and we've been having staff have been having some internal conversations about the code and what sort of parameters need to be worked out and um, what some some of the options might be so that process is continuing and then towards further into spring we're going to start looking more on doing outreach to the community about this reach code and we're looking at May for having some broader community workshops to uh, educate the community about what a reach code is, what the code might involve, and then go into a little bit more of the specifics. So that's, we're ten tentatively thinking about doing that in May. And then in June, that code, whatever it is at that point, will come back to this committee for your recommendation before we go to council. So, the role that the committee can play in sort of this process, we're hoping that you'll support on that outreach side. And that's both sort of what you have started doing already, which is educating the community about uh, electrification and incentives that are available. And Martin's been doing that through the newsletter. We've been getting resources up on the website. So there's that sort of role and keeping the community up to date on, on the rebate and incentive side. And then there's also the possibility of helping through the events that you're planning and that Amy will be talking about uh, later on the agenda 
promoting the town's workshop series and sort of encouraging participation in that. Um, and then of course, um, you'll have a, a role in advising council on what you see as the, the best option when we get to a point where we're considering a draft ordinance. So are there any questions or comments on that process? Nope. Um, outside of um, supporting community outreach, is there anything else you need the committee's uh, help on? I don't think so. I think, well, the other part will be sort of evaluating the policy mm -hmm. and, and that part will possibly come later, although we're always open to have a, a dialogue about that sooner if you'd like to. Well, if I may, I'll just add um, the way that we're sort of envisioning this working through um, ultimately a recommendation to the town council um, would be in June as well. I think it makes sense for us also to bring whatever um, draft ordinance, if you want to call it at that point, uh, I don't know how flushed out it will be, but at least the main points of a of a code or an ordinance. Uh, related to residential remodels would go, I, I do want to bring this to the planning commission. They should be aware of it. And I, what I'd like to do is they would provide informal comments that would then be passed along to the climate action committee for your ultimate uh, recommendation as to the um, town council. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're, so I don't see, foresee the planning commission actually making a formal recommendation town council on this. This isn't a zoning matter. Um, but uh, I think their comments will uh, I'd like to try to get them to um, provide comments to you all as well before your recommendation to the to the council. Um, just to high level, just so you know where we are, a couple of the things that we're going to be we've already started to think about, which are going to be critical points in developing this code are one, um, how to define square footage of remodel, what that definition is, what does it look like? Obviously, um, so that's gonna be key. And so we need to be clear on what that looks like. You know, we're already starting to think about, should we match how the fire department does it? Is that really clear how they do it? Um, and and so on. So that's one consideration we're, we're gonna work through. Um, and I'm not talking about exactly like a 50% rule, but how they view remodel of a space within a house. And because as you know, the county ordinance talks about a threshold after which you get kicked into certain, you know, additional requirements. Um, so that's a big one. And I think as we're doing that, we also need to go back even to the new, what, the code that's already been adopted and sort of potentially revisit what we define as new construction as well. Um, because that, uh, what we um, what the code currently says is any structure that has never been occupied qualifies has a as a new um, building that would be required to be all electric. And so there's some considerations, different communities to find that differently. What qualifies as new? If you demolish X percent of the building, for example, then you get kicked into a new requirement, which can make sense if you keep like one wall up of your house and you know or something like that. Um, those are some of the things we're starting to think about, just so you're aware of those important um, definitions, which ultimately, if we're going to explain this to anybody, those have to be sort of clear, um, or at least be able to be explained, the considerations that go into that. Yeah, thank you for adding that, Adam. And another part of that code will be the EV side. So the council adopted the additional EV requirements for new construction, but not for remodel. So that would also be something to be considered in this update. I have a, a couple of thoughts. Um, it was brought to my attention today, and I think this is on the county side, that if you have an, you know, you've got solar panels on your roof, but you want to add an ADU, that that then kicks you back into 
uh, not just the new construction, but a revision of your entire property. And and I I don't have details on that, but it was one of those moments. It's like, oh, we really need to be thinking about if someone is building an ADU, which we want to promote um, and encourage, we don't want to discourage them by putting onerous, like you have to put solar on your ADU, you know, that at for another $20,000. That's just like, mm. so looking at those questions, I think is really going to be helpful for, for coming up with something that people will feel comfortable with. Yeah, thank you. I do believe that the county's code, the way it's written is that ADUs do not contribute towards the threshold, um, but I can look into that more and see how ADUs would be affected. There were two examples, one in Tamales and one in another, I believe, unincorporated area. Okay. So yeah, it, if you if you can have time to do that, that'd be great because I thought that that was just one of those unintended consequences that really throws you know a wrench in the works. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and one last question is around the scorecard. So is the idea to use what more, what the county has provided as a scorecard or creating our own? You want to start with that? That would be... If we want to postpone that, I'm just wondering where that goes in the mix of defining... Right. That's definitely something that we're looking at and I think it, talking about as staff. Yeah. I, if you currently, I mean, we're literally just talking about this as of last Thursday or Friday, when, you know, but, but um, it's under discussion. Certainly, I think the way that I would look at this is one of the goals, obviously, of the county coming up with a model code is trying to create some level of consistency. And so there is some using that as a baseline makes a lot of sense to us. As far as how you tweak sort of the point system, you know, there's those are, again, things that we may find we want to do or Makes some sense, but um, I certainly think having consistency with at least that framework, that was the model code. So people are familiar with it, no matter if you're building something in in the county incorporated or you know, Santa Fe or here, you know, ultimately the, that's the, that was the goal around all the outreach. I think they did with other jurisdictions and whatnot is try to get there. I mean, that's always the goal. Oftentimes doesn't end up perfectly aligning across jurisdictions, obviously, but. Any other questions? Nope. Should we move on? Actually, one quick question. Um, You've given us sort of the framework for how this is going to go to the planning commission back to us and then to the council. Um, we would be helpful for us not tonight, but soon to know what our timeline is and the level of input that we can have if, if truly we're going to be making a recommendation as the committee to the council or working with staff to do that. Um, just, you know, want to make sure that we're working with you, but that that our input and why we're here is is also taken into account. Is that... Yeah, I'm, I think the idea is that we would have a draft at that point in time when we come to uh, the Climate Action Committee, and that would be you'd be making a recommendation based on a draft model reach code to the council, not model a draft reach code to the council for residential remodels. Does that clarify it, Leslie? Or yeah, I mean, I I think that I'm not quite sure what the process will be in terms of our working with staff. I mean, if staff brings it to us and we have significant comments or changes that we really feel strongly about, would it be a separate recommendation from staff <laughs> and 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 then from the from the committee? Or I mean, that's that's where I see a little bit of a, a process issue. Yeah, um, I it it very well could be. I mean, oftentimes what we do with advisory bodies are basically to um, keep a, and I'm not saying where we would go. I don't. I hate to sort of think what all the different possibilities are, but it could be a draft ordinance that is developed through the outreach process, 
Um, and then all those comments get incorporated or try to be addressed. They come to you. And then you have a sort of a, you could have a series of comments to that, to change or modify it that sort of lives as your recommendation to change and modify X, Y, and Z of it. And that all goes together and it can be presented in such a way. So. Will, will all the working be in, in, an, in an open session or will be some, okay. Yeah, so the all the public workshops would be available. Um, so this committee has already looked at the county's model codes and recommended that the council adopt those in full. So do you foresee having a a you know a big issue with those codes or are you seeing, you know, you don't know what the final code is going to look like that we propose is that your I, I, I can go. There. I think that the the council wanted to open this up to the public. They weren't um, they weren't comfortable um, adopting those portions of the county's code, and so I, I think we just need to. I I think we have to wait and see, you know, okay. how it evolves. And, it, it, and if during the, I was the last thing I was going to say sorry, is during the process, if there's a need to want to do a workshop in front of the climate action committee, that's a possibility right. too. If you want yeah. to do that before it gets to sort of fully developed, mm -hmm. with the, that sort of thing. On the record, please. Okay. <laughs> okay, great, that's helpful. So yes, we can definitely bring it back before the whole public outreach process and have an initial conversation. Or midstream. Or midstream, yeah. And also, would you let us know when the planning uh, commission is going to be hearing about this? I think it might be helpful if some of us were able to attend. Yeah, we can give you an update on that when we get closer. I think we're thinking June. At this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Should we move on? We don't have any public comment. Okay. So. Item B, discussion of draft climate action committee community outreach plan for 2023. This is going to be Amy. Great. Um. So I, do we need to present it, Phoebe, or does everybody have it? It was in the packet. I've got it. If folks don't have it, I can yeah. I can pull it up real quick if anyone needs it on the screen. So yeah, pull it up for the public to see. Sure. Um, and I have to say, while Phoebe's doing that, it's Phoebe created this, so I get to Yay. speak to it. But um, she <laughs> should get all the credit. Um, so thank you, Phoebe. And I have to call out Martin, who is keeping the momentum going with the public outreach and all the messaging and it's getting quite creative. So um, thank you for that, Martin. Um, so what I was hoping to accomplish here is just a make sure that you are all aware that this is uh, in place and there's a draft and what is available and if you have any comments about any of it, obviously, feel free to chime in. But I think at the highest level, just walking you through what's in here and then um, talking through a couple of things specifically around messaging and sequencing. So if we're, as an example, going to be having workshops in the public around reach codes, then maybe we wanna lean into our energy actions. If the fall is about the car show with the lions, then maybe we wanna lean into EV actions then. However, we have Earth Day coming up in April, and we might want to promote all of them. So that's uh, one thing I wanted to just touch base with everybody on and get some feedback there. Um, so what you're looking at here that Phoebe put together is just by month, obviously, breaking this down into tasks and goals. I added in a, a column in here around messaging, around what we could potentially be messaging in those months. Um, then there's events and presentations where we would be pushing this out and newsletter and other outreach in the next column. And then the last one, I added an impacts column because as a, as, a, as a subcommittee and thinking through what we want some of our goals are to be around outreach, I think I put something like 10% of the, the population or a thousand touches. So if you have a goal like that and you start realizing, okay, we went to the farmer's market and we had 30 people. Okay, we've got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. So um, it's great. And I'll talk a little bit about the farmer's market, but it helps us understand um, 
how what the impact is and how we're reaching our goals. And so Martin um, is also thinking through, uh, well, I guess we exchanged emails on what that might look like from the newsletter perspective, like how many people open it and what we think the touches are there. <clears throat> Um, so any questions on that? Just what's here? No. Okay. So from a messaging perspective, I put something in here. Um, Corte Madera can make a world of difference as sort of our headline as a committee. And I wanted to run that by everyone. We actually pressure tested that with the Lions. They liked it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Because the video we showed was like, you as an individual can make a world of difference. So we said, Corte Madera can make a world of difference and bring it back to local actions. So I throw that out to this group and see if that's something we wanna get behind. And if, if so, how that plays out in our outreach. And then if you move to March, you'll see uh, pushing that, that main theme and then digging a little deeper on energy. So getting even more specific around deep green, promoting incentives. Maybe those are some of the things that could play out in the newsletter, Martin. Um, and then in April, if we scroll through, we'd come back again to our headline and we would talk about, we might shift to transportation. And um, I'll talk in a second about food consumption. Um, I'm gonna pause there and see if anybody has thoughts or strong feelings about how we sequence messaging or we do it all or, I think it's a great plan. I think that having consistent, a consistent name, a consistent look, um, and a consistent message with changing details is a great way to go. It's like an ad campaign in that in that regard. So people know what they're eventually will know when they see you know the logo or they see the name. Then they'll go, oh yeah, I know that this is going to be about climate work. So um, I think that's a great approach. Yeah. Um, I noticed the the part about hanging banners, and that's at the farmer's market. Were you um, plan to do that? Yeah, so let me, I can speak to that a little bit. So we did, um, I'm going to talk about the farmer's market, and then I'll talk about the banners. So we did, um, we went to the farmer's market February 1st, uh, Wednesday, and the town center team was awesome. They put us like in this really great spot. Um, and we had a volunteer there with us. Who was a volunteer? Uh, can I say Tim Tim Walsh? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and um, we provided talking points, and I think those went over really well. Um, and we had a really good response. I'm excited about it. Like the number of people that came by, Phoebe brought. You'll see the table; it looks really good. And we had a um, whiteboard, and we put the question: What do you think is the biggest natural gas appliance in your home, right? Given all the talk around stoves. So people would stop, we'd go, can you answer that question? And then we'd give them a giveaway if they got it right. And so I thought it was a really great you know, yeah. outreach. And um, yeah, so we were counting how many touches. We had 30 touches. <laughs> Again, we'll need to do this quite a bit. Um, and three volunteers. So we got three new volunteers who I still need to reach out to. Um, yeah, sounds yeah. great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Andy, Anything to you. add? Well, Phoebe has been hard at work too on making that a <laughs> presence. Well, you organized it. So yeah, I thought it was a great event and it was really nice to get out there and talk to people. And it you said 30 touches, but some of them were actually pretty in-depth conversations with people yeah. and giving them lots of resources. So definitely worthwhile. Yeah. So we'd like to do this monthly. So I'm going to come back to the monthly event. Monthly at the farmer's market? Yeah, monthly at the farmer's market. Um, and so I'd love to see who wants to join each month from the committee. But to answer your question on the banner, so we had um, we have banners that we've used in the past uh, that we worked with with Ride and Drive Clean. And so they say dump the pump and they have the um, link to go and pledge to go EV. So we had those hanging at the farmer's market, but we have three of them and they can hang around town, assuming we can get the space, like we have to reserve the, um, the different locations. Um, but if we wanted to do something else where we said Corte Madera make a world of difference, 
go see it, you know, put us a tiny URL for our site. And we had the five actions, you know, maybe we could make banners for that, um, which is what you see there in the February tasks mm -hmm. and goals. So does that answer your question? Yeah, or, or, so we have uh, space available to hang banners throughout the town. Yeah, I think the there, were, there are five locations. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they have to be a whole process. I believe a complicated process for that. <laughs> that has to go to the town council mm -hmm. for actual approval. And the pic, you have to show them the picture of the banner, but we've yeah. had those other ones. Yeah, approved, so. yeah. And these are both sides of, of the freeway and sprinkled all around all the communities. Great. Yeah. No, they they're actually been effective. Um Mankey Park, I guess one too. Mankey yep. across from Safeway. Across from Safeway. By the village. Mm -hmm. But it, scheduling is important yeah. because you have to get the approval and then the town staff has to go put it up, right? We can't just go do that. Yeah, public works department. Yeah. It's about... <clears throat> so it does require some planning. Um, anybody take pictures of the, uh, yeah, I forgot we didn't put a picture in here. Yeah. And yeah. And that's the kind of thing I'd like to put in the Chronicles saying that, you know, here's your climate action committees out there, you know, meeting and greeting mm -hmm. and announcing that you're going to be at the farmer's market. This would be something to do. Good. Yes. And we have to, that for next time. <laughs> and to that point, we do have. We do have pictures of a few things that we've done. Oh yeah. Can those Our go show. on the, can those go on? Did we take pictures when we were at the Lions Club? Mm -hmm. those oh, at the Lions Club. Yeah. Well, anyway, <clears throat> but yes, we should we should always yes. have our camera with yeah. us, phone with us. And, yeah. But if we put those on the website, then it's like makes it a little bit more human. Yes. Put it on the website or give it included in the uh bottles. Good. And I sent the picture to Ride and Drive Clean because they're dump, we had their dump the pump banner up. So they've got it. Um, so great. We'll get you those one. So I guess like just to close out on this point, it sounds like you had suggested you like the overarching theme and then to mix up the actions and however they play out in the newsletter. Does anybody feel strongly about the sequencing of that? Or can we, Martin and I together, figure that out? Yeah. I guess I would feel strongly that on Bill, on a banner. Sorry, I would feel strongly that that we make it better known to the public that the town has declared a climate emergency, and that that be kind of a hmm. part of the theme. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. That's that's what the council said. One of the things that in in my work that I found is that starting with it's an emergency shuts people down because globally and locally, we are inundated with one emergency after another, one crisis after another. Mm -hmm. So I think the language we should maybe think a little bit more about the language around that. Um, I, I the idea of you, you know, we can make a world of difference somehow having a tag in there about on that individual level and that community level because there's pushback on that too and it's a it's a global problem there's nothing we can do that's going to change what china's doing mm -hmm. and bringing it back to what we can do and set be an example of in terms of action um i think is is really important but i totally get your point i think being clear that the town has you know, put that stake in the ground that there is a climate emergency and this and we're doing it, but then leading immediately with with something positive, hopeful, and and you can, here's where you can engage. Certainly, yeah. <clears throat> the emergency could be a footnote to it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a little detail. By the way, <laughs> I, I, I I'm kind of inspired by what this the mm -hmm. the richness of this and the success at the farmers market. I was just kind of brainstorming with myself about what other um, placement we could get, or what what other ways we could get visibility. And two of the things that came to mind for me was um, Eli Beckman uh, gives this um, update from the vice mayor. Now, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people read that actually, and I, um, I, and I do hear that people read the chronicles. I don't always read it. 
And I was um, shame on you. I, you know, and, and I was wondering also, you know, if um, is there some way to get something in the IJ? And it, maybe it's an op-ed or like a little little placed we piece. Definitely do that. How do you feel about that, Martin? You've taken it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. I think I think maybe just an awareness kind of thing. That's all. Not not a position piece, but right. Yeah. About what we're doing, or yeah, and that we're that we're actually doing something. The the intent was to just continue to get visibility, awareness, um, momentum. I I'm just inspired by this. That's all. Yeah. And that we're joining other communities around Marin as well and the Bay Area. You know, we're not doing this all by ourselves, but we're leading along with partners. Um, I think that collaborative piece is really important. Um, it's like, get on board, folks, you know. You're paused. No, I just want to think of good news to have. Um, and I mean, I just... It brought to mind this uh, electric vehicle adoption rate in Marin that's gone up. We've got, I was going to save this for later, but it's something to talk about that um, in 2022, new uh, zero emission vehicles were 33% or more than 33% of all vehicles registered in new, newly registered in Marin. Is that right? Yeah. So that's hey. a big deal. Um, up from 20, 26% last year. So it's going up. Um, and our adoption rate is 7.3% now for 2021. And it was 5.2 in 2020. The data that uh, Phoebe and I were wrestling with just earlier today is somewhat clumsy, but we can paint a good picture coming out of it. And I wonder if that's something to start with Wait, that was 2021 or 2022? Well, for the registration data, it's the latest we have is 2021. Uh, for new vehicles, it's 2022. Got it. But we don't know yet how many of the new vehicles were replacing old ones and that kind of thing. So very quickly, you get into the weeds. <laughs> um, but there's a couple of good uh, you know, headlines out of it. Um, for the IJ, we'd have to we'd have to make it obviously bigger than Corte Madera, right? Are we one of the more recent ones to do this kind of thing? Is that can we say we're can we say we're like we're now an official committee? We're happy to join all these other folks who are doing it. And we, we have Phoebe, and we have <laughs> and we have a right. That's that's a big, that's, that's a big, a big deal. deal. It's a big deal. Right, so that's a so maybe there's a right there, and I think I don't know if it's I think it's Chipperon is working with Mill Valley to yeah. get their own Phoebe. Um, <laughs> yes. So I mean, it's like this is this is a movement. This is like yeah. a trend. Yeah. Movement. Like yeah, a trend center. Good. All right. It's an idea. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good it's idea. idea. But we have to we have to sell it to the IJ, right? Well, it could always be an op-ed that just just oh, that we just yeah, yeah, that's easy, rather than an article. Mm -hmm. I was I was thinking if there's if there's once we get some helpful tips on incentives that are coming out of the IRA mm -hmm. um, that that are actionable for residences, mm -hmm. that might be interesting. There's great sites for that. There, there, there are um, a lot of that promotion stuff comes out of the government agencies that are providing them. So it's they don't tell you how to do it. They just say, "Here it is." You know, there's yeah. gold in them, our hills. Come get it. Well, okay. Pick and shovel. You know, how do I how do I get it? And um, I have some good news that I may be off off piste here, but I. I, I had a, a friend of mine in uh, San Rafael who was trying to get a rebate for something or whatever he bought, uh, was, you know, ran into Bay Ren, no one responded, emails weren't returned, that sort of thing. Ooh. Couldn't get the thing done. So I told him to call Mark Chabria, 
And Mark did it. He got him the stuff, found another incentive for him to apply for. So that was my test of making sure that, you know, if we talk about being able to use that resource, will it really work? And yes. it does. So yes. that's really good. And they respond very quickly. I put in for a rebate and I didn't know it was Mark. And it was like, so, so yeah. Um, how much was your rebate? I didn't get it. <laughs> you have to get the right. Oh, it's so complicated. But yeah. it was very responsive, I guess, is my point. Yeah. Um, you know, is the rebate still active? Is it still funded? Did you get the right appliance? Is your appliance applied to all of them? And you go down the rabbit hole right away. There are a couple of, um, I think it's um, the switches on has. Yeah. It's uh, a very good, it's one yeah, of the it's, best It sites. is. And you just, you know, you plug in and that's, details and you're off to the races. Yes. Um, and so I, that's, it's on our that. website. Right, we've got it. It's right. the one the, the one I'm promoting because I wanted to promote because it works. It covers all of them, and you don't have to get you read everybody saying the same thing over and over again, which is what happens. Do you think? And I'm just bringing it back here so mm -hmm. I can close out on this. Do you think that there is an opportunity as we move through March and April, and you're talking about energy to to actually do? And maybe you've already done it. Uh, where you talk about incentives and how to get them and give examples? Um, what I what I had started to do was to talk about how, what's a heat pump, you know, yeah. like fundamental stuff. And you'd be astonished to know the number of people that don't know how an air conditioner works, which is sort of like fundamental to getting there. Um, or the refrigerator. But, anyway. You know, you know to, to understand how it works, you know, pumping versus, you know, lighting it up. Um, so, and, and I'm struggling with how how in depth to go in that, you know, maybe just cover it briefly and talk about the money you can get. <laughs> yes, I'm not. <laughs> okay. The money you didn't get. The money you didn't get, right, if you don't do it right. Well. Pull me back, um, pull me back if I'm going down something I shouldn't be going down to, but, um, Oftentimes we, these discussions about people that can afford things and, um, and I'm getting more and more emails, uh, information that comes to my in inbox about how the IRA is providing incentives for people with a lower AMI <clears throat> and, and part of outreach. Is there a way that we can do more tar targeted outreach to, um, uh, the, the limited number of multifamily uh, um, residences that do qualify for some of these incentives because they're pretty good. I mean, mm -hmm. um, and it is becoming much more clear about what the incentive is and how you can get it. I can get um, is, is part of our, is there a way with um, help from the town that we can reach out to owners or um, yes. multifamily or single family that that are, have a lower income. So let me. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna. And I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it and maybe chime in. But let me. Just, can I just close out here on the messaging okay, piece? With, no, because I, I think it's a really important point. Is that we're all in agreement that we want to have a headline, and then Martin and I together will sort of do the details of what we're promoting, and at banners we'll use our dump the pump banners for EV promotion and any other banners we create. Yeah. Okay, so um, this gets to the events piece. And so we've talked about the farmer's market and um, at some point we will come back around on the chamber, which is a really important piece of this. But I think to your point, um, Phoebe put together a great list of community organizations in um, Corte Madera that we can do outreach to and do this advocacy presentation, um, but also HOAs. And so we had a good conversation at the farmer's market about starting to do these presentations um, for uh, those types of family units, right? So I think it kind of gets at this. Is it, is HOA means multifamily to you or? Well, or so it could be both, right? It could be HOA of a community within Corte Madera, but also an HOA for development. Right? Like townhomes. Yeah. But there's a, apartment buildings too. There's like numerous small apartment buildings in old old part of town. But don't, do they have, 
do they have organizations that we can present to too? How do we reach out? Can I, can I, yeah, I can speak to this because it, you know, we've done a lot of trying to reach people during the housing element process. Um, I think the most effective way is sending a postcard okay. by mail and you, you just send it to apartment. Um, I don't know if you, you know, it's hard to, I think you may be able to, I don't know how you can filter the, the data set to get to specifically, I don't think there's like a multifamily list, but I think we know a lot of the larger apartment buildings around town that you could send postcards to every unit there. Theoretically, there's not a, I, and I and I would be cautioned a little bit about sort of making assumptions about people living in apartments and they're going to target even low, you know. Yeah. But but nonetheless, I mean, we have done specific outreach. Obviously, there's um, San Clemente Place Apartments, uh, which is a hundred percent affordable um, uh, apartment building on San Clemente Drive. Um, and we do have addresses for a lot of other multifamily in Casa Buena and the Meadow Suite area. Those are large apartment buildings um, and so on. So that's that's the best way to do it other than, um, but postcards we found have been the most effective um, unless there's actually some of the property managers as well, but they're reluctant to actually sort of advertise on behalf of something. Because I, I think this is an important point of equity across the board. Definitely. Not just income, but if you are in a multifamily, you know, if you are in a condo or an association and you don't have a charger, well, that's a problem, right? And so how do we help get the information out to everybody that might need it in a way that um, gives visibility to what's possible, I mm -hmm. guess. And the county actually does do some of that outreach to multifamily buildings. They have an environmental health inspector that goes out every two years and they bring flyers with information about the Bay Run programs when they do that. And I spoke to the person at the county who sort of coordinates that outreach and he's willing to work with us if we want to expand outreach to multifamily. So that's definitely a possibility and could go on our the climate work plan for the next year when we talk about that at the next meeting. I'd like to suggest too that we really coordinate with MCE because they have some multifamily programs, um, both EV and um, in, you know energy efficiency and and others. Um, is there a way to? I'm thinking of the the issue that comes up a lot is a property owner doesn't necessarily want to spend any extra money on the property, and the tenants may want some improvements but it's sort of referred to as the split incentive. Um, and there are ways to work with property owners and tenants in a way that um, improves the property, improves the lives of the people who live there and is not um, you know, financially uh, uh, a hindrance for the, for the property owner. So reaching out to, I, I know that there's some very small apartment buildings around town certainly in this, near, well, in that neighborhood where we used to be, um, where there are older buildings, there might be four or five or six or seven um, units. They're not, they're old. And I would think that that would be a really good target for a lot of incentive programs through MCE, through the county, through the state um, to improve and work with, work with the owners because obviously they're the ones that are gonna drive a lot of this. So there are incentives that make it um, the sort of wraparound projects where it pays for itself essentially. So, ask the question. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. About. And then the town can um, waive permit fees. Yeah, I don't know if that requires a. <laughs> Come on, Alan. yeah, smile. Oh, yeah. so, there's so there's so few of these projects. I'm just thinking this is the kind of the momentum builder that just. Um, I'm trying to just get more people aware of these because I, I am inspired by how significant the, the tax incentives are mm -hmm. at the recent IRA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is there a some kind of a flow chart that could be developed where they said you would I know there's some on the individual websites that talk about, you know, who you are and what you want to do and Mm -hmm. and what your income is and then 
you know, you just what you want to do and and you can come to an answer at some point about how you might obtain you should, the switches on as well. If the switch is on, you'll see it's, I mean, it asks you, you know, do you own it? Right. I mean, all that. And I, so know, I know that. Okay. But there's multiple, there's another level. Yeah, it's true. Levels. And can that, you'd think that some computer genius would bring it all together and make a flow chart that worked for anybody on the street that could, they could maybe go to these websites and, or, Start somewhere. Yeah. Chat, chat, GPT is getting... chat GPT. Um, I'd like to follow up really quickly on on David's suggestion. Um, maybe our committee at some point could propose that our council do a pilot program for a year, maybe reducing to incentivize reducing permit costs um, to incentivize certain changes. Um, maybe not waiving it entirely, but but because I, I know that that might but, give people a heart attack, but um, but really a way, creative ways to incentivize. Um, you know, I'm thinking about green banks as well, or micro loans where um, you're, you're giving, you're, you're creating a situation where it's a very low interest rate and the money gets paid back quickly it's a small amount and it's a pool that goes a pool of money um, could be through the town could be through the town and the marine community foundation or some creative approach to microloans to help people kind of get over the the initial shock of some of these Um, the last thing I was going to say, and I think this, did you want to finish? <laughs> well, no, well, I because I think this is an important topic, yeah. which is, and we hear it all the time, which is I'm not buying a car or I don't drive that much and it's a big investment, or you want me to electrify my home. And that is a big investment. And I think we hear that. And so if you look at our four actions around transportation energy, there's, you know, conserve, ride your bike, you know, use different forms of transportation, but Phil and I have been doing the resilient neighborhood um, oh. Oh. Uh, classes and food is significant. And so we don't have food in our cap because it's very hard to measure from what I understand. <laughs> so I'm proposing that we add a fifth action around food consumption, because if you, we have to, we have to make it accessible to everybody. And I think that that's a important thing to consider. Yeah. What, how would that help? What would that change? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not pushing back. I'm just saying, what would that be? What how, would that, how would that manifest in what we're doing here? So when we're tabling or we're doing events, we would have instead of four actions, we would have five, and the fifth would be about consumption, food and food waste, or just even food, but food and food waste. Sure, it's the, it's the waste that's the big problem. Yeah. That's it. I'm happy to help you with that. And we've and we've been learning just how much you cut down in your home of consumption of certain food products, the impact of that. Do we do we need discussion or no? I'm just yeah. well, I don't know. Do we need discussion or do we all <laughs> thumbs up and yeah, it's good. Great. Yeah. I, the only uh, I, I think we were originally <laughs> we were trying to be more focused. But if you guys are convinced from the work, from the classwork that you're doing, that this is really substantive and, and a way to bring people into the conversation, I think it's a good idea. I think that's what it's about. It's bringing yeah. people into the conversation. And it's a way that everybody can relate. <laughs> you have to turn your mind oh, on. I'm mind's on. And it's a way that everybody can relate. Like, mm -hmm. we, all everyone, know everyone we all eat. We all eat. Yeah. We all and we all throw food away. So <laughs> yeah, right. right. And food is globally the number three cause of greenhouse gas emissions. Mm -hmm. And it's methane, and it's a waste of money. I mean, the story that you can tell about this is if you are buying what you're going to eat, it doesn't become a science project in the back of your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And and that that's you know people people can relate to that. Oh my God, I just all this stuff just rotted, and I wasted money. So it's it's another way to look at it. It's also the law now statewide that um, everything needs to be in a compost uh, bin and collected. 
So that's just awareness, but it's really, you know, you can get people in their pocketbook. It's like, and it can be easy. It was, it's as much as saying, okay, if you eat chicken or fish or, or chicken or meat or something four times a week, do it two times a week. You'll have a big impact. Right. So, okay. Good. Uh, I don't think there's any objection here. Right. Okay. And my last question, who wants to join us on the March 3rd farmer's market? I can't. I, I can do it in April. You want to talk? Sure. Great. I'll do it in April. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got you for April. What day? What uh, day of the week is March third? Uh, a Wednesday. March third? No. No. It's what, a Friday. Sorry. What day? What day do I have? March first. March first. March first is a Wednesday. Wednesday. March first. Eighth. Okay. Sorry. Oh, did we say March eighth, Phoebe? I think we said March 8th. I'm yes, sorry. Can you do March 8th? I can probably do March 8th. Yeah. Okay, great. And Phil, I'll reach out to you separately. I'll just have to first check the, my is calendar. It the first or the 8th? It's the 8th. Do it I have is, the 8th there? You did, yeah. yeah okay. that's, it's the 8th. Okay. And what are the hours of that? Uh, noon to, we did noon to 3. Okay. All right. I might show up with a camera. Please. Uh, we, <clears throat> early on, we had had uh, um, all the, uh, this outreach planning. We had talked uh, about seeing if there was a budget to support things like mailings or new uh, banners and stuff like that. Have we, do we know what the budget is for this committee? There is a budget. It's not specifically for this committee, but if there's something that's needed, you can make a request and we'll let you know if we can cover it. Okay. And I think so far we've uh, okay. had all the things we needed, although Amy, it sounds like maybe we need a new tent. Uh, <laughs> and probably a table. And a table at some point, because we're using Amy's table. Yeah, so I think we should, we, we're we gonna do that. We'll purchase that and would town needs that anyways for, other events yeah, yeah exactly okay so great. We, should, we should have a tent and a table if the banners are not an issue and things like that it's great. it's a little in the weeds but how big is the tent and who and the logistics of the tent does the town help you set it up or it's just one of those easy no. tents that you just pull out and the pop-up pop soccer or yeah. you see them at the farmer's market it's not I mean, they are you know, some are easier to open and close than others. That it's a two-person <laughs> job generally. I, so the town keeps that at somewhere, and or do you keep that, or how? It's I've kept it, and I've kept the table. I have, a, I borrow a table. It's not my table. Um, and it's like at the farmers market. <laughs> at the farmers market, we didn't have the tent. We just moved umbrellas and hung the banner between the umbrellas, and we were good. We got creative. We need sandbags as well to hold the tent down to keep it from moving and flying away. <clears throat> you, you're done? <laughs> so we're done with items. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thank and you. And Phoebe. And Phoebe, thank you, though. That structure is great. Okay. Um, it's done with B. Is there any other comment on B? No? Okay. Um, any public comment? No. We'll move on to C, a discussion of ad hoc subcommittees and their goals for the year. Is it Amy and Phoebe? Phoebe, I'll kick it off. So I just wanted to start off by checking in on how the subcommittees are going. Um, I have from... Um, what I understand, we have the three subcommittees. We have communications, which is Martin, Leslie, and Meredith. Uh, community engagement and events is Amy and Meredith. Tracking climate policies and programs is Phil and David. That's what I and thought. Leslie. And Leslie. Okay. So question for each of the committees. Um, have you met recently or at all since you were created. Let's just let's just go down your list so we can um sure. They... So communications. That's Martin, Leslie, and Meredith. 
That's, well, no, it's Andy. No, no it's you. Uh, Who, who's on first? Um, who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> um, Martin has done it all. <laughs> Martin is the committee, um, and I apologize. I haven't. Um, I think we've had a few emails back and forth about what about this, but um, we haven't That's met true. other than other than that. And um, I'm not I'm not sure where Meredith is, and I haven't talked with Meredith for quite a while. So, um, a, a official meeting of the subcommittee, no. Um, and Martin, thank you for the heavy lifting on on the newsletter. And and I would say that the goals for the year is to support what we're all doing, you know, keep keep new topics out there. But then I really want to uh, promote um, what you know events is doing. Mm -hmm. That's you know that's important. So events subcommittee, um, Amy, you're the only representative here. Have you met with Meredith? No, Meredith and I haven't had a chance to meet. Okay. Um, how about the policies and programs? So Phil, David, and Leslie, have you all met in your subcommittee? We haven't met. I've been out sick. Um, um, and you were away too. No? We met once. Oh, yeah, but but not 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 in this last month for sure. Okay. Um, so how, I mean, do you feel that the current subcommittee setup is working for you or would you like to reorganize so that folks who are, um, who are, you know, not able to participate in one subcommittee are moved into a subcommittee where they're, they want to participate more um, do you feel that having all three of separate three of these are I, is still I, I really useful? appreciate I really appreciate the prompt. I think that in my mind, um, item D four uh, D on the agenda is is kind of where the policy policy committee wants to go, which is um, working on incentives. If that's policy or not, um, the the but the policy focus, the direct policy focus, is going to be working with this um, with the with the with the changes to the town code, mm -hmm. to the building code, um, unless we're going to reach out to other communities or to the county. But I, um, to come back, I'm, I'm rambling. But um, do we want to um, work directly on regulation and policy change? Or do we want to morph into being active on helping residents understand incentives that are available or is that task of helping people understand is it is it a different committee yeah, mm -hmm. just, is that communications? well it's communications would get it out there but if but you need the information, yeah, we need the information. Yeah. Um, and the subcommittee structure is to get around the brown act is that right, right? It's just yeah. so we can so we can chat without you know having an agenda and a formal meeting and and that's why it's limited to the numbers that it is. Um, so we have to do that, right? Right, but yeah. you don't have to stay in this current. So there, yeah. the subcommittees are meant to be temporary and focused on a specific issue. And if you're if you're not meeting in your subcommittees, it it seems yeah. like you know something needs to change there. Yeah. In order for the subcommittees to still be helpful and helping you, the purpose is to help you get work done outside of these committee meetings so that when you come to the meeting, you're able to present what you worked on and move move things forward. So it, it's it's up to you all how you wanna move forward with that. If you wanna keep this current structure and just figure out what's preventing you from meeting or if you want to reorganize. And... Regarding the policy yeah. committee, do you have any thoughts on this, Leslie? <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the <laughs> Um, it's, it's big, it's complicated yeah. and, um, it requires, I mean, I think that you and I, maybe all of us, you know, do a lot of reading. Um, we shoot emails back and forth every so often. Um, Phoebe, you're included in many of those, I think. Um, but, you know, synthesize, synthesizing it and, um, presenting it is, you know, kind of that probably is something we should be doing. Um, and presenting it to the committee and the public and then taking the salient points and giving them to to martin um but but i think we need to you know we need to focus it down it can't be it's it's big yeah 
So yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> I think um, I think that the big policy work is going to be changing the the code. Yes, and then um, having the the policy committee reform a little bit to and and I think this came out of last month's meeting was to to take on the topic of how do we structure a, um, guidance for the town of Quartermaid area to understand the the true costs of decarbonizing their homes and the incentives that are available. And so meeting on that, yeah. whether we want to call that policy or change the name of that committee, is that, is that okay? And then just what we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But we, but nobody did anything probably because I was out sick too. Yes. You are a fearless leader. Yeah. 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 Um, so do you want to change the name or just keep the name and yeah, just keep the name. And yeah, so we're going to keep the name and then um, I appreciate the prompt, the urging, and then meet one more. And I think it's subject to uh, the discussion on the next point too, or B. Okay, that sounds good. So how about the communications and community engagement events subcommittees? How are you all feeling about current setup? I don't know that I need a subcommittee. I mean, I don't know that I need a subcommittee. But I don't know. That you're okay. I'm okay. <laughs> and you're collaborating with Phoebe right now, and it seems to be working out great. Okay. So from a communication standpoint, <clears throat> if we can just have um, meet the requirements of not having more than three people involved, then we can just do that. I kind of like the notion of having a subcommittee because it sounds like something we intend to do rather than just someone's good idea. Um, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Would it be helpful if you and Amy were able to coordinate on the communications and outreach? Yes, like yes. Actually, uh, communications then should have um, representatives from policy and events on it, right? I mean, that so we can communicate? Yeah, we'll, we'll form a different subcommittee. Well, we'll do communications <laughs> and engagement. How about that? That works, but... Um, Martin, to your point, you can't have serial meetings outside of the full committee meeting. So you can have someone from the policy subcommittee on your communications and events subcommittee, but you can't be um, deciding on things together that are passed along from the policy subcommittee to the communication subcommittee, if that makes sense. So you just have to be careful there. So I shouldn't get involved in policy and that sort of thing is that the idea is that does that work i mean i'm happy because i don't have much to contribute I, 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 sure. way of putting that. I think it'd be fine look I, I think what you're saying is that you would like some coordination between the information that is coming out of the policy committee that you want to that or that the policy committee wants to sort of put out there right and I don't see any reason that that's that's fine. Um, and likewise, also have information or communication from Amy about the outreach events and be able to sort of pull from both those committees. I mean, it could, you know, I think that's that's absolutely fine. I don't see any issue. Okay. As long as it's an informing rather than a yeah deciding. Yes, I'm yeah. I'm not deciding any of that stuff. Right. Okay. So can we continue to call it a uh, communications or just forget the communications subcommittee and I'll just do it and talk to these folks. Oh, I can, I can, I'd love three or four of them right now. Yeah. Okay. I'll, just, I'll get some water. Do we have water in here? <laughs> no, I don't we didn't think bring we do. Today. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, we're, we're going to take a little break. Oh, do this. That's not. Oh, that's great. Well, yeah, just pour out. Are you sure? You can. can I pour it in there? Of course, but I've been drinking out of that. No, I'm not. I question. 
I want to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so just to add on to that, part of the the second half of this discussion, which I think Amy is going to take, is about thinking about the the goals for the year. And part of this is getting ready for the work plan discussion, which we're hoping to have at the March meeting. And that's going to be, uh, like we've talked about in the past, it's a, a climate work plan for the town, which is, you know, partially staff's role, but also the committee's role. So that's something that may inform this subcommittee's work, particularly the policy subcommittee's work in the future. There's a, a couple items that I think we've already sort of talked about like the reach codes or the EV acceleration strategy. And those are, you know, sub policy items that we'd want some input from the climate action committee on. So that could also be part of the policy subcommittee um, if that helps define your role there a little better. Yeah, and I'll just comment because I know I've asked Phoebe about this and I don't think it'll be a surprise to anybody on the committee, but um, having some understanding of where we're going so that when we get to the end of the year, we can say, hey, yeah, we really, I mean, obviously the work on the reach codes is significant, um, but I think about it in terms of engagement too. How do I know that what we did had an impact or that we achieved what we wanted to achieve? Same goes for communications. And I think that is gonna be really helpful for P Phoebe as she's building the work plan and us getting a sense of, you know what that impact looks like and how we'll quantify it. So that's my two cents on the goals. Um, and I would just say, you know, that again, the climate action plan is really help can be helpful in that regard because mm -hmm. it's sort of is there to try to lay out what the goals and objectives and outcomes are intended to be or maybe not as precisely as you may want, you're welcome to sort of evaluate those as well. But I think that's ultimately the <clears throat> the place through the work plan to sort of prioritize which ones of the what policies in the climate action plan are sort of ones that are worth pursuing this calendar year, because you can't do everything, right? It's, right? it's like focus. And part of that is we already, yeah. Anyway, so that, that's where I think the work, the work plan conversation can be helpful in focusing the efforts of each of these committees to then make sure that you're progressing throughout the year to accomplish X or Y, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think in the beginning of our committee, we went through that whole plan and then we picked the cap items that we wanted to mm -hmm. action against. So I think it's all sitting there and we probably moved the needle on some of them already. Um, but yeah, I think that's a really... So the action item, I'm, I hadn't thought about the cap um, in the way you're describing it. So is the action item for the policy subcommittee to revisit the cap and and then and then see if we are no? Sort of what I'm working on right now, and then okay. I'll be at the next meeting bringing to you an update on what's been implemented, what's in progress, and okay. then we can have a discussion about um, you know what this committee thinks is. Where to, where to go next. Um, I think the the role of the policy subcommittee in that is, well, the whole committee is providing recommendations to that work plan. Um, but then once we've selected some items, once the work plan has been approved by council, um, really digging into those items and providing recommendations on the specific cap strategies that we choose to move forward with in the near future. Well, when is the question. cap going to be redone or the GHG work going to be redone? The greenhouse gas inventory, I believe, is going to be updated this year by that's the MCEP, um, Christina Rourke, that does that for all the jurisdictions in Marin. The cap, um, we don't have a, a timeline for. It does say in the cap that it should be updated, I believe, by 2025. Them. Don't quote me on that. Um, but we don't have a, it's not planned right now to be updated. And the GHG inventory that will be for 22 or 21? I believe it would be for 2021 because our last inventory was for 2020. And 2020 was the first one. 
Mm, no, there was one prior to that. Okay. Yeah. It might be for 2022. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I'm just, I'm curious. That's all. But I would, I would just say, you know, one of the, um, I think one of the core things that this committee can work on is, is looking at the cap and saying it needs to change or it needs to evolve in this way and make recommendations to actually change the cap and then have that be adopted by the council. You know, mm -hmm. So those are things that are certainly, and, it, and that's policy work. I mean, that is, so that can be ongoing and it's not drilling down into the nitty gritty of the weeds of the policy of like what the code looks like all the time, but it's setting oh. sort of the overarching policy of the town with respect to goals and objectives. So part of the, part of the, Part of the problem that we've been having, Amy, is that is that for us to actually do work together, we've got the Brown Act. So, and and then we've only got three people in this policy committee looking at cap policies. And um, is that is it adequate for you, or is that? Um, I think it's a great idea of going back and revisiting the cap and seeing that are there some things that need to be revisited, revised, improved, or or such. And I and and you've had a lot of interest in doing that. Um, yeah. Well, I'm actually looking at something we put together a long time ago around the cap, the actual yeah. actions that we all said that we wanted to do under transportation, energy, so forth. And you can see we've hit some of them, right? And so I think this aligns nicely with what Phoebe will be putting together. But we also had called out new ones, right, that weren't mm -hmm. in there that are in this list. So if it's possible yeah, not to, to reshare this. Yeah. Um, if that answers your question. No, that's it's good. in yeah. there. Yeah. And then I think it'll allow us as the cap, uh, as we think about the, the next version, what's missing because it's not here. Uh -huh. Okay. It, and typically how that works, you know, is, is that committee, subcommittee work or thoughts process can help, uh, can be conveyed to, let's say, in between meetings to um, coordinate it with staff. Staff, you know, will help put that into a staff report. And then all the other committee members get sort of on board. They have the time period to review all the information before a meeting. So it's not like they're, you know, that's the time though to actually for all the other commissions, it's a 72 hour period to, for a lot of them to get up to speed all together on action items. Mm. And that's just, that works. And then you play it out in the public, you know, and then you have the conversation. So it's, and staff typically is the conduit for questions. Well, it is the conduit. I mean, you, you can't, that's the real Brown Act issue is that anytime you're sort of asking or putting on an agenda item, that's something to change something in the cap or write and make a recommendation or take an action on something before the meeting, you can't be, you know, sort of communicating with each other on mm -hmm. that. It's really asking staff um, what your questions are and can you, you know, is there having more information out there? And so you're not necessarily, I mean, the point is you you aren't all necessarily on the same page, but when you come to, to a meeting, you have the discussion, you have a deliberation and there's a back and forth about what the action should be. Was there more on D? Or that cover it? Just, just to admit, I would also say just there are other ways to do it. This is the value of workshops and things like that as well, as they are more discussion oriented. You get sort of an informal feeling of where people are in certain issues, and then that helps to develop sort of the next steps. So does the committee want to make any changes to the subcommittee structure at this meeting? I don't or think so. would you like to wait until the work plan discussion and see if there's any adjustments that need to be made then? Yeah. That's, wait. So what, what are you preparing for next month, Phoebe, just to be more precise? 
Yeah. So I'm going through the climate action plan and evaluating which of the actions have been completed. And then I'll be bringing that to this committee, sharing that update, and we'll be starting a discussion about which items should be prioritized for the next one to two years. Great. In, including including like what staff would be doing on that as well is that part of it is this part of the work plan right yeah so that's what we're doing but right it would identify staff you know who's the lead on okay. projects good amy did we address everything you wanted to address in, a, in item C. Mm -hmm. Okay. Phoebe, was there anything else on item C? Okay. Covered it all, thank you. Okay. Uh, next item was D, discussion of how to help residences understand the cost of decarbonization. Um, and this is David and our policy, sub, policy subcommittee. Um, and we didn't meet. And so I think we, we may have to kick this down the road. But that's something. It, did, did you have any more feedback on this since we met last? No, I just put it on here in case you wanted to discuss it. Yeah. We didn't meet. We should meet. I've been out, I've been out of out of commission for a little while. So let's um Phil, let's try to meet. Yeah. Okay. Um <clears throat> I, I I'll 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 say again that my email box is just full of of people providing great information about how incentives are are being implemented and and how uh, people are using the actually getting the money that's coming down from the Fed. So, um, and then uh, just to circle back, there was an idea about looking up um, how Fairfax has has been doing this. So. Um, can we set a date after this meeting? Yeah. Okay. Okay. When when you say costs of decarbonization, what you really was, you really want the costs and benefits, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. The idea was to um, defray the costs. The idea that I was putting forward was to um, provide guidance to to residents about um, oh taking one gas appliance at a time and helping them understand for the vast majority of single family detached homes in Corte Cor Madeira, um, what it, what it, uh, what the real costs are and, or, and what incentives are available for them to um, change out their furnace or change out their hot water heater yeah, yeah. or change out their range. And, and so the action item for the subcommittee was to, talk about that and decide which one of those appliances or services would be um, talked about first and then to um, work with staff or, or work with ourselves to provide some guidance for 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 residents on you know um, the, most of the single family detached homes in Corte Madera are kind of the same size and they probably have furnaces you know, it's all same vintage same yeah. size. so just to help them uh, understand that remove some of the mystery because when when I get in in discussions with people, and they say, "Oh, I'd like to do that. How much does it cost?" And I say, "I say, well, there's great incentives out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really helpful. So, you know, can we do more for guidance to um, help people actually understand if you've got a, a hot water heater of this size? Um, you know, yeah, well, it gets they run. It gets tricky pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, with I mean, you know." Gas hot water heaters are smaller than heat pump hot water heaters, and you have to have space, and it it gets tricky quickly. Um, I think we can give them some broad guidance. Yeah, and as soon, to this as soon as you have it, let me know, and I'll publicize it. <laughs> okay, good. That's yeah, that's <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah, I think that should go on the website. Really, um, it oh, needs yeah. to be a resource where people can refer to it, and you know, we can talk about the usual appliances that people have in their homes and. The story is that, you know, make a list of what uses gas and make a list of the things that are are old and are going to need to be replaced 
and then you know then you you start to make a plan and um and this is you know this is an induction stove here's what they cost this is what a new electric or gas one would cost here are the rebates for this i mean this is how heat pump water heaters work this is how heat pump you know with with a heat pump hvac you know you're getting a twofer you're getting air conditioning and heating um so what would that cost if you were to get air conditioning separately from heating when you had to replace your furnace boom i mean it's like we can we can do this we can do this it'll take a little work but we can do this <laughs> so we'll we'll huddle after this meeting to get a date for our subcommittee subcommittee meeting. I'm, I'm available more okay. available than okay. you are Great. obviously okay <laughs> um uh, sure. almost any time okay my calendar's pretty chock full um <laughs> so uh should we move item five uh, uh updates and reports and staff first mm -hmm. Yes, just one update for you all. On the February 21st council meeting, there's going to be a presentation from the county on their reusable foodware ordinance. And that is an ordinance that requires all food facility vendors to use reusable foodware for in um, store dining and then compostable items for takeaway. And the county is offering to enforce that ordinance for towns that adopt their code by May 10th. So this is something the uh, council is going to be considering, and they may at some point want the Climate Action Committee to provide a recommendation on it. So I will send out after this meeting the staff report with the information about that meeting. It's on, but it'll be on February 21st if you want to attend and hear the presentation from the county about that model code. It's and coming up quick, February 21st. Oh. Yes, it is. So I'll get that out as soon as possible. And mm -hmm. it's, an yeah, it's an information session. It's not an introduction of the ordinance or anything. It's just a presentation from the county staff about, you know, informing the council about what the ordinance is and giving the opportunity for public comment and questions. So that is my update. Quick question for you guys. Um, We've had a couple of conversations about having MCE come and do a presentation to the council. Is that in the works or should we should we contact Sebastian or um yeah, Sebastian can contact me. I mean, we I can I can sort of see if there's interest by the council to have that done. I recognize that that is the question um, that, you know, there needs to be a request from them. Um, we can help with that too. <laughs> but it, it, the questions that came up, the reason I bring this up, the questions that came up when we were discussing the REACH code in, with the council last fall, um, there was just a, a variety of, of experience and interest and, and, and knowledge, really knowledge, not experience, but knowledge about energy and what PG&E does and what MCE does. So just kind of getting a level set for all five members of the council seems, especially we've got some new people. Um, I think that just would be helpful. So um, that way when we are when we make a recommendation or have a conversation about any of the stuff on our plate that we're, we're speaking at least kind of the same language. Let's, let's follow up. I'll follow up specifically with you and you can let me know like, the specific presentation that you're thinking of in terms of the information that MC would provide, then that would be helpful. Are there any updates, reports from from committee members? Nope. Busy people um, or ad hoc subcommittees. Been there, been there, done that. Um, should we move on to future agenda items? Is one of the future agenda uh, items that you're going to report back on on progress on the cap? Yes. Okay, that's uh, great. Yeah, I have a couple items that I'm anticipating. One is the cap implementation presentation and discussion of the climate work plan initial conversation. Um, another is an update on the council's 
work plan and priorities for the year that they will be considering at a meeting soon. And the third is potentially the reusable foodware ordinance, depending on how the conversation goes next week's meeting. Can we, um, since the greenhouse gas emission inventory is going to be done this year, what is is it the is the scoping the same as it was the last time it was done? I believe so. Yes, I believe they're using the same protocols for the inventory. Does it is it worth revisiting the scoping? I, I think it makes sense for it to be relevant to the inventory that was done in the past. But I think that the way that greenhouse gas inventories are being done has really evolved in the last couple of years. And I'm just wondering if it makes sense to ask staff or ask the consultant to revisit um, the scoping of the inventory. Mm. Let's connect about this offline and see what specifically your if you have a specific points that you are concerned about last time it was done was it scope one and two only you know i'd have to check with okay. christina work about that speaking of christine just sending her our our best wishes right she's, she's a bad accident actually oh, no. yeah. so no. go into details on the public video but but yeah just follow up with you She's out for a little while. A little while. She's doing okay though. I, I'm not drawing a huge objection to just using the protocol that was done before. The only thing I would say is just I think they're being done consistently throughout all the jurisdictions in Marin. Yeah. You know, so that's I mean, it's certainly still valid to marry some points and maybe circle back and have that communicated to Christine or whoever is going to be doing those through MCE, I think is. I'm trying, I don't, we have I that as an action item for next month, just a discussion about how the gr greenhouse gas emission. I don't think we are knowledgeable enough about it, okay. but we could, again, that could be some, some presentation by whoever's doing the greenhouse gas, gas inventories. Before before she does the work, um, has she, is she under contract now to do the work? Yes. She, yes, and it's part of a consortium of right yeah MCEP. Yes, through mcep Sorry. and i can look into finding out more about what the protocol is using but as as christine is out for some period of time it may not be you may not be able to get that information Maybe just a, a request from the chair that uh, when when she is available if if she could just before the work is done if she could just um communicate to us, us what the protocol is and if it's still relevant for us because that the way things were done in 2019 may not be may not reflect how we want to think about it now mm. and just because every other jurisdiction is doing it may not be the right answer you know and maybe she already is she yeah i don't know yeah yet, so. yeah um kind of a nerdy topic there but mm -hmm. um is there any other future agenda items No, I'll hold the 4th of July parade till the next one. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Baby did it. Baby. Nice job. Is there, I, maybe I'm, I'm out of, uh, out of place here, but has, is, is there any um, feedback on the website? Has it come up and I, I haven't Have visited we... it yet. I haven't received any feedback from any committee members, except I got that document from you, David, the, about the solar that I'll work to get up there. Okay. Maybe we just encourage other committee members to um, uh, look up, look what's going on on our website. And, oh, yeah. and yeah. Great. Cool. It does look good. Okay, great. Yeah. So if there is any other feedback, please let me know. And I'll work with Lorena to, to get that up there. And you can all thank Lorena for getting your changes up there very quickly so she did a great job cool okay any other items I, for the uh, chronicles uh, click through rates can we put that on a um, like every tuesday to have a results sent about who's what the uh, click through rates are on our um, items i mean 
Yeah. I have that on my list to, to get you some more information on that. Was there any last week? <laughs> I think I sent you the ones for last week. Okay. Or was it the week before? I'll check. Okay. Okay. Any other future agenda items? Hearing none. I'll adjourn the meeting unless there's something else. Okay, meeting adjourned. None. 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 None.